surprised by controversies that are whipped up in Washington. Right? That, that's, uh, uh, that's par for the course. Um, but I'll repeat what I said two days ago. We have a basic principle. We do not leave anybody wearing the American uniform behind. Uh, we had a prisoner of war uh, whose health had deteriorated and we were deeply concerned about it, and we saw an opportunity and we seized it and i make no apologies for that all right ladies and gentlemen that was the president yesterday you've heard us uh, play that uh, uh, bite before joining us now to talk about that and uh, a lot more regarding the uh, bergdahl incident and other uh, administration uh, incident shall we say uh, dot com hello david hey steve thanks for having me always my pleasure thanks for coming on all right so you know, you say that you have no problem with uh, the president taking the stand that you just uh, saw and heard him take, correct? Correct. Uh, I think he took the right action in this case. My problem is with the politics. Right. Well, first of all, what did you think about that statement in particular? See, if I'm a service guy and I'm ticked off about this, and especially if I'm one of the service guys who served and was there and knows in my heart and by the evidence that this guy deserted, and here the president is saying that this, this controversy is whipped up in Washington and can dismisses it, um, again, it's just kind of blatant, uh, arrogant disregard for those who really were there and feel in their hearts uh, that this is wrong, and also those who died uh, trying, to, trying to find this guy. Yes, yeah, Steve, no. In fact, we have a situation now where the president actually was able to sort of clean this up on Monday and two, excuse me, Tuesday when he spoke in Poland, and now he's dirtying up his own cleanup. Uh, I agree with you that when you look at what he said today in France, he, he was making light of the fact, as you point out, that people that served with Bergdahl have strong opinions about this, and at least to them, this is not a political football. Again, I'll reiterate, I do think the president took the right action here, but what they've done this week has amounted to essentially, in my view, political malpractice. Uh, they should not have rolled this out with the Bergdahl family coming to the White House. They should not have rolled this out with Ambassador Susan Rice going on the Sunday shows and saying that Bergdahl served with, quote unquote, honor and distinction, because clearly, as you point out, people that served with him don't feel that way. They feel like he left his unit and walked off of his post. And so the White House, which could have just stuck to this line and said, look, we don't leave anyone behind. He's a soldier. We're going to bring him back. Then we'll deal with the other questions. They've let it sprawl. How does this happen again? I, and, and, and Susan Rice went out, like you said, on the Sunday shows and says he served with honor. Um, and now, she's not, she's not, as I've pointed out time and time again here in regards to this, she's not now getting talking points from somebody as a spokesman sitting in for Hillary Clinton. She's now the national security advisor. She had to know that what she was saying was most probably 99 percent a lie um, and then today uh, at Normandy she doubles down let's uh, listen to what she had to say there okay uh, do we uh, have it well she let's let's just say she doubled down okay and she would she refused to back off and uh, it, it, again I don't understand that I won't even call it tone deafness I just don't understand what they're how do you explain what they're doing no, I think at a minimum, tone deaf would be a way to describe it, Steve. And you know, I am frequently uh, a defender of the president's policies, including a defender of the decision to go get Sergeant Bergdahl in this case and to make the deal with the Taliban. But it was tone deaf, and I don't understand what they're doing. Um, look, at, to a certain extent, Ambassador Rice is snake bit, right? She was on the situation with Benghazi, she went out on the Sunday shows, now she's gone out on the Sunday shows, and I don't know what she knows or didn't know or who prepared the talking points, but the point is you can't go out there as either the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations or the U.S. national security advisor and make statements that are going to cause the public to lose confidence in you rather than gain confidence in you. I don't second guess her ability to advise the president, but their messaging here is just really, really terrible. And Okay, now in your piece that you wrote, uh you point out, and I believe rightfully so at theroot.com, that, uh, you know, this is not, this problem that this White House has is not unique to this, uh, this issue, of course. No, it's not, Steve. Um, this is a pattern that we've seen more recently with the sh situation with the VA and General Shinseki. It's a problem we've seen recently with the rollout of healthcare.gov. And it's a problem that goes way, way back in this administration. Look, they had this problem with the Gulf, the Gulf oil spill, with the uh, Ground Zero mosque 
They've had this in a lot of situations. And I think what it reflects, Steve, is that even though I think this president has done a lot of things right, when it comes to coming before the public and explaining what they're doing and why, the president and some of his administration seem to take the view that they can just do what they think is right and the people will take it on faith that they're doing the right thing. But that's not the way it works. They've got to explain directly and clearly what they're doing, why they're doing it, and what the timing is all about. Is it, is it incompetence? Is it inability to learn uh, from experience? Is it arrogance that we'll do and say what we want and we don't care? Uh, or is it a combination of all of those? I don't think it's arrogance. I would describe this as political malpractice. There's, there's a, it, what we have here, Steve, is a failure to communicate. Um, <laughs> you know, you take an action, you take a strong action. Look, the Secretary of Defense, General Dempsey, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, are both on the side of the president here. Even General McChrystal, who the president relieved of his command, is on the president's side. Here. They all say the principle is we leave no man behind. But somehow, after people see the Bergdahl family in the Rose Garden at the White House, they say Susan Rice said that he served with honor and distinction, even though by most accounts he left his post, you're, you're left with a muddied message and you're left with people losing confidence in what the president is trying to accomplish. And right. I think that's a problem both in terms of his leadership and I also think it's a problem in terms of if you're a supporter of the president, it's ham 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 hampering his ability to get things done over the next two and a half years. Time is running out on this administration. Yeah. Now, of course, the, we've, we've talked about only some of the controversy uh, r related to all of this. I mean, you, you also have, uh, you know, the, the soldiers who, uh, who uh, died looking for uh, Bergdahl. You have his promotion in absentia. Um, and, and you have the parents, as you, as you alluded to. Uh, and, and again, this president had to know. You know, I think Jim Mikulszewski of NBC said all they had to do was Google this soldier and his family and, and know. Well, they, um, they've known about it. They, uh, see, that's the thing about Obama to me. People say when he, when he nominates or, 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 or you know, appoints a left-wing radical who, you know, who once claimed he was a communist, oh, maybe he wasn't fully vetted. No, no, no. I believe that's why the guys are usually appointed. They're fully vetted. Obama knows exactly what he's getting. And I think he knew exactly who he was hosting uh, it, when, he, when he had those parents, especially the father, uh, at the White House. I think it was in your face. Yeah, I, I wouldn't go that far with you, Steve. Uh, I, I think that they have, should have known, at least in this case, uh, about the situation with Sergeant Bergdahl, right? I mean, there's at a minimum that well-known Rolling Stone article going back to 2012 written by the late Michael Hastings, where he chronicled uh, Bergdahl's story and where a lot of the people he served with said, look, we don't see this guy as a hero. We see him as someone who deserted us or abandoned us. And so at a minimum, they should have known that, as you said, by doing a simple Google search. Uh, you know, I think you and I are going to disagree about some of his other situations or some of his other appointees, but I do think that there has been a failure or, or, or an inability on the part of this administration, up to and including President Obama, to anticipate what the pushback is going to be and to sort of prepare for what the public is going to think about what they do on any given issue. Yeah, and again, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to debate, you know, appointees, and I wasn't trying to do that. I'm just trying to say no. that I believe he knows everything. You know, sometimes things leak out and they're picked up, and especially on the right or in the news, they'll say, well, maybe he wasn't fully vetted. No, no, I believe these people are fully vetted, and they know what they're getting, and I believe it's purposely, no matter who we're talking about, they, they know the background of everybody fully, and I believe the, the appointments he makes are based on those, what some might view as radical uh, experiences of that person, because I believe that's who Obama is. Again, not being specific, but talking in general. Now, we, we get another report today of retribution. Over 30 people in the VA said that they were, you know, they were whistleblowers and they've had retribution against them. Uh, the acting chief of the VA says 18 veterans uh, left off the waiting list have died now. Um, and, and all this is getting buried. Do you think that the timing of the release had anything to do with trying to take this veterans uh, scandal off the pages, the front pages? No, I'm not going to hold them accountable for that. You know, I'm not going to second guess the fact that the White House's position is they weren't going to leave a man behind. This war is winding down. They have they were able to strike a deal with the Taliban. Some people don't like the deal that was struck, but they felt like this was the time when they had to move and and secure uh, Sergeant Bergdahl's release. And the fact that it came off successfully, at least to the degree that he was able, they were able to recover him without him getting hurt, uh, I think uh, lends credit to uh, you know their timing. And 
and their version of events. Uh, but th it's important that the VA story not get buried by this. And I do think that when you look at what happened with the VA, they paid a heavy price. President Obama clearly did not want to let go of Secretary Shinseki, but he had let it get to the point, again, by not anticipating and not preparing for the public's outrage over the VA situation, he got into a position where he had to right. you know, uh, let Shinseki go. And I think the fact that they didn't learn from that just a few weeks later in the Bergdahl situation goes to the point that we're talking about. Yep, absolutely. David Swerdlick, thank you so much as always, my friend. Have a good day. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. All right, folks, give me five is next. Don't go away. Federal and state authorities.